What's up everyone? Today we're working on the 455 block and most of it is pretty much there. But I wanted to show you how I go ahead and take and remove a lot of the casting flash. Now there is quite a bit of casting flash in here and some weird spots no less. But overall not a bad job from the factory. Until you hit like the spot that I thought was rust. Yeah, nope, that's actually casting flash. That's, that's solid. We're gonna have to remove that with uh, a bit of a chisel work and a grinder inside there because that is absolutely no bueno. It's crazy to me that this made it through quality control from the factory. That is that is a heck of an obstruction right there. But we'll clean that up. And honestly, the inside of the block is, is virtually rust-free. This was such a well-maintained engine, very surprising just how well it was done. But as you can see, we took some of the high marks off, rounded everything off. That way we have a very solid, very strong engine block. Now, one thing you cannot do, do not remove any of the edges around your cylinders. That's just silly. But everything else is fair game and you can do a couple of methods. I prefer the Dremel, taking small bites opposed to giant bites. It takes longer, but far more precise. A nice long sections right here. We'll grab ourselves a nice file and we'll run it just like that, watching for any type of uh, you know things that we don't want to hit. And then we can use the actual bastard side of it to the inside of them. If you have smaller ones, it works really well to, to get nice fine bites out of it, like so. And then the rest of it, just a quick Dremel. I use a different one that I have on there now. We actually move over here, see where it is where I stuffed it. And there's a few more things I want to take care of while we move forward, but uh, where did that go? Oh, there it is, where it belongs. So for the majority of the edges, because you're just trying to round it off, you're not reshaping the edges, you're just gonna take the Dremel at high speed and just remove the edge. That way it's nice and rounded. Now the inside towards where your oil is going back onto the cam, we did go for a much more aggressive one because the the casting flash in there was really bad. But all you're doing is removing the actual casting flash, not reshaping it. And it does kind of impede it a little bit if you leave, say, this section right here. I left that in. As you can see, they're normally supposed to be gone. But if you just kind of allow it for a nice smooth transition, that little extra adds a little bit of a web and that gives a little bit more structural stability. And with an engine that's so thin cast, maybe it's not a bad idea just to leave it. So we still need to go ahead, hit this with some fine uh, uh, honing stones. And uh, I'll show you how I do, say, the webs inside here. And I'll, you know, again, I'll you just high speed, follow it, put your hands somewhere nice and secure, kind of like you're right in cursive, and just flow with it. Allow the metal to guide this barely touching it with the tool, allow the tool to do the work itself, and that way you retain the shape and you're not reshaping it, you're just taking the edge off, which anytime you have a, a casting edge, you know, again, it could be your fracture line. So, not to say it would, but it could. Very simple to resolve any of these. You let the metal do itself and quite honestly, most of it will just disappear. Unfortunately, we did have a lot of casting right here that was not supposed to be and I think it would look a lot nicer just to remove that casting and uh, it, it does make this so much nicer. On the back side, there's some more of that casting flash or casting artifacts. You can see that right here, but all I'm gonna do with this one is just take a large um, die grinder and just hit this and round it off. We're not gonna make this one look beautiful. No one's ever gonna see it. Someone may never, never even see the other one, but better just to take care of it. So let's go ahead. I'll set you guys up so you can see what's going on right here, and then we will go ahead and you know hone the block and get it the rest of the way ready to go to the machine shop for a nice clean. The clean we have right now is solely to do what we're doing, not for reassembly. So once it goes to the machine shop, we'll have to take out all of our oil galleys, uh, or plugs for our oil galleys so that they can get a good flush. Other than that, guys, this engine is very solid. Weird that it has, like you can see on this side, this has just got a little tiny bit of rust. You can kind of feel some casting artifacts right at almost the base of this right here. About from my first knuckle down to my fingertip, 
So I'll probably just throw a little bit of a grinder down there to knock that out. But the rest of these are in very good shape. So let's go ahead, finish this up. I'll show you a little bit in here. It's pretty much done. Um, given a little bit of grinding right here just to knock down the edge. But the rest of it is solid. You can see I also kind of try to, again, let the tool do the job, not you. You just kind of even your transition so that the oil has a nice pathway to flow. And uh, yeah, we're, we're getting there, guys. Very impressed with this block. Oh, for you guys that are interested in casting numbers and stuff like that on the 455, this right here is an SF block. Generally speaking, you're, you're, this is gonna be in big cars, not in performance vehicles. So this is just a standard 455. And you can go on, there's a whole bunch of different casting ones, but say this 450, or sorry, this 350 is an SP block, and that is a performance block from 1970. Uh, I believe that's the only year they did this particular one. Very high compression, great engine for, you know, putting it in a little hot rod, or any other application that you want a little extra zip to it. So, let's go ahead and show you what we're doing. So you want to allow the tool to do the job. And uh, that being said, all you're going to do is just ride the surface with it, and that nice carbide blade will do it for you. You just got to follow it. Let the metal talk to you. If you see any imperfections, just give her a little touch. and then round off the edge. Occasionally, run your finger to see, like you have a sharp point right there. And this like that. Really, just barely touch the metal with the carbide bit. Use two hands, so if she tries to get away, you can wrangle her in very quickly. You just help with the transitions. Don't take a lot of metal off, just a little bite. There, there is definitely not happy mistakes here. It's the, if you make a mistake, you have a, a bad time on your hands. So. Just like that, that's all it took to get this right here nice and work, worked out of a little right there. And run it around there. And that's it, guys. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Be very careful, use two hands, and don't let it get away from you. Constantly check your uh, your surfaces and make sure you're not going past what you're intending to remove. Don't take a lot of material out of it, just enough to clean it up. So that's all I have for this section. We're going to go ahead, run the hone through it, and then we'll be right back. So unfortunately, we had a really bad rainstorm come through and it knocked the power out when I was about halfway through the engine. That's why it's taken a little bit longer than I was expecting to get to this point. And so far, the cylinders were cleaning up really, really well. And we just turn this extra light on so you can see this side. And so cylinder number one is in really nice shape. I don't see any issues with this one. Cylinder number three, again, really nice, cleaned up really, really well. You can actually see if we get a little bit better light on here. Cylinder number five came out really nice as well. And then when we hit number seven, I had a weird uh, artifact that I really couldn't explain. You can kind of see it right through here. It's a scratch that goes from the bottom of the bore all the way up to the top. And if we spin this around, we can actually see there's another one right there going up. So I was wondering about it because it kind of looks like it's been there for a little while. And I, so I asked my buddy that has been building engines about twice as long as I've been alive, what he thinks it could have been. I sent him a nice picture of it. I was wondering if maybe one of the uh, piston rings was stuck and it caused it to do that. And the only time he's seen something like this in the past, and I mean it is deep, we take the, the tool and put it in there, and we can actually see 
I can't do it with one one hand because you got to get it just perfect. But um, there's a substantial amount of material removed here to the point where even if we sit down and hone it, by the time we get this out, I highly doubt our rings would seal because we'd be taking that much material out. Uh, on top of that, I would be really concerned about just, you know, at that point you've taken so much material out, there's a good chance your cylinder's not going to be at all uh, true. So unfortunately, guys, it's, it's one of those things that realistically, this is a blessing in disguise. The pistons for this are around $500, so definitely not what we uh, paid for our Hemi. And the overall rest of the build isn't nearly as expensive as a Hemi build, so I think this is going to go together fairly easily and fairly quickly. And we have a lot of work yet to be done on the actual body itself. We got to get the chassis ready, and we got to start welding things into the uh, the body, such as the trunk floor, the floor pan. We got to strip it out. We got to put cross members across it, so when we pull the the body off, the compromised floor won't cause any type of warpage in the body. But yeah, this is this is a bummer, but. Um, you know, this is something that you can really expect with a lot of our uh, situations in our hobby. You just never know what you're going to get until you open up the wrapper. And even though most of this has been really, really good, this one little thing definitely derails us. Because, you know, who knows? I I like to play with turbos, and you know, maybe down the road we'll put a turbo in the engine. And if right now we're already going to get a little bit of blow by if we start putting any type of boost into this thing. And if you look at the video from Richard Holder, he, uh, on a stock block, you know, again, how many times he could have done it, but um, yeah, he, he made 750 foot pounds of torque with, with boost. It's insane. <laughs> so if you build one of these engines up, they really can do some great things. The biggest thing, if you're gonna be doing that though, is that we're, we're gonna be girdling this engine, but you definitely need to girdle this engine and uh, prevents any type of flex with the crank. Such a thin cast, you really want to protect it. And yeah, these things weren't just known as the Torque Kings for no reason. These things are monsters. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's bittersweet, but I think it will put us in the right path. We'll get a, a hold of TA, uh, TA, yeah, TA performance and see what they think I, like i said five hundred dollars for a set of pistons maybe we'll we'll see what the you know connecting rods cost i think the pistons came with wrist pins so i don't know i'll give them a call they'll make it so they're they're forged they're lighter it'll it'll make the engine a lot more responsive as far as rpms and quite honestly it'll make it a lot stronger so until the next time guys remember this is you know, i want to be up front with you guys i want to make sure you guys know what is going on and unfortunately this is something that you could run into in an old engine. You know, I I called my buddy up to see what he thought that was. And I was wondering if maybe one of the, the piston rings got stuck. And he was he was actually saying the only time he's seen something that deep and like that consistent on both sides was when they sat there and they they spaced the 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 rings themselves, the upper and lower rings. They didn't deburr them, and then when it was put together and they slid it in there, unfortunately the uh, the cylinder went ahead and deburred the, the rings for them. So that's what I'm kind of thinking. If you guys think it's something else, put it in the comment section down below. At this point, the guy that told me that, he's been building engines for twice as long as I've been alive, so I, I can definitely see that and understand and explain why there's one there and one almost 180 degrees because that's how you orient your rings as you put it down in there. And as it just started to work its way down, she got she got really marred up. So, you know, it is what it is. We're going to go ahead and uh, just keep plugging forward because that's what we do with our hobby. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the kind of uh, surprises we get and we can't let it deter us. Remember, just little advice. I was talking to someone the other day how I stay... Um, motivated to get projects done if you have no time during the day to get something done really just carve five minutes out and just you know either deburr something or put a spot weld somewhere just so that you keep it fresh in your mind so the next time you go and play with your your project you're not kind of spending 15 20 minutes trying to figure out where you left off so remember as always keep your shiny side up be safe and god bless